So tell me a little bit about Lutra. What is she? Technical details? Uh, well, she, she's uh, called a uh, gaff yawl, technically, although some would argue she's a catch because the uh, mizzen's uh, actually in front of the rudder. But she's uh, she was built by David Moss up on the uh, wire north of Blackpool uh, in '93. She was then called Elsie. She was commissioned by uh, a vicar called John Catlin for single-handed sailing. Uh, she originally started out to going to be an open boat, uh, then she was going to have a cuddy and then eventually they decided to go the whole hog and put a cu uh, cabin on. Uh, she's got two berths, uh, two burner paraffin stove, uh, toilet, uh, seating area, so for her size she's got quite a lot going for her. Uh, she's got a £600 lead keel, uh, she's also got a £200 uh, steel centre plate, so very stable, uh, double-ended hull form, uh, long keel, uh, directionally immensely stable you can sail for hours on end uh, with a bungee on the tiller she's so well balanced uh, you know she can reef down very well uh, she has a chain uh, luff on the jib uh, with uh, I've never seen it before it's got uh, sort of L-shaped links so it uh, locks like a bar when it's hauled tight so you can actually furl it uh, uh, no you can reef it rather than furling it uh, so that's uh, very useful and everything's led back to the cockpit so uh, you never have to go out of the cockpit to do anything uh, very good. Originally she had a seagull outboard on a bracket uh, on uh, one side but uh, I, I think uh, John Catlin had a bit of a back problem so uh, he got a bit fed up of lugging that into the uh, locker when he was at sea uh, so she's now got a little uh, Yanmar industrial engine in the cockpit locker uh, with a hydraulic drive which is uh, wonderful. <laughs> And, and where do you normally do your sailing then, Peter? Oh, as I say, I do a lot on the river, and if I've got a quiet period, I'll get the boat off onto the sea. Um, a couple of summers ago, I quite a bit of cruising uh, out of um, Biddeford, um, along the North Devon coast, uh, across to Lundy. Uh, I've also sailed out of uh, Newquay in West Wales, across uh, towards Ireland and uh, up the coast there. But uh, anywhere, really. I mean, she's such a delight to, to sail, and... Uh, she tries out as well, so uh, you know you can go up creeks and dry out for the night. It's uh, very good. Well, I, I had a 16-foot gaff sloop, which I'd had for um, well, probably about 20 years, um, but that was uh, not particularly stable. It was, it was quite over canvassed. Um, so it, when I had a young family, that sort of um, fell out of favour a bit. Uh, I wanted something a bit more family orientated and. Uh, an aunt uh, of mine died and left me some money and I thought well I'll get a you know what I call a proper boat uh, so I looked around at all sorts of things um, mostly new builds because I didn't want all the maintenance uh, problems because you know, running a Victorian steamboat's enough <laughs> um, so yes I, I was looking around and um, I actually called David Moss because he, he does an 18 foot version of this um, and I uh, it looked like quite a nice boat, um, but I was a bit concerned it was too small. Um, but it, it was really at the top end of my budget because they are extremely well built. I mean, I think this took about five years to build. I mean, it's um, beautiful craftsmanship. Uh, and I was talking to him, and he said, "Well, if you're interested, I did build a, a one-off 21 um, a few years back, and I know he's looking to sell." And uh, so a deal was put together, and I went over to the Isle of Wight and had a look at it, and bought it on the spot and trailed it back. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it was all, you know, pretty well set up as I'd have set it up. I've done very little. I, I added uh, an electric log, a um, few little tweaks on the rigging to make things easier. But um, apart from that, she's very much as uh, built. I mean, it was done so well in the first place, and I've had her for um, about 15 years now.